Hi guys, it's been a little while since I uploaded a video and I'm very, very sorry. I've been very, very busy doing loads of stuff just like this. Emily went away for a week with her mum and I thought I'd surprise her by getting the drive done outside the front of the house. So we've got us doing that. Also, I travelled to Sheringham with a load of mates to go and play on a golf day and I got the drone out. We had a really, really good time. It was just really, really nice to play some lovely golf with my mates, even though I'm not very good at the game. Plus, I construct a wood burner out of an expansion vessel so you can follow us along while I do that. But we did a nice karaoke sing-along thing in our local social club to raise money for a charity. We've got quite a lot of videos coming up from Portugal and from a few other places and also I bought a tuk-tuk and that's going to feature very heavily in Times of James videos okay but just see this next batch of videos as being season three part two. Please remember to hit that subscribe button hit the bell then you'll get a notification that we've uploaded a new video and I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get going. Right then guys, so we're at it again. I'm back in the shed. As some of you know from my other channel, I'm a plumber. It was now time for me to have a good old clear up, get the bath installed, nicely leveled up. And this is what I'm gonna be working on in this particular video. So this here is an expansion vessel, right? Um, an expansion vessel is something we use in plumbing. Now I've tie wrapped it onto here. I've, um, I've wrapped it down because it's, my vice is not wide enough to grip this on there and allow me to work on it. So this is the plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a stovepipe that's out there, okay, on to the end here, right? That's the plan. So number one, I've got to try to get this hole reasonably square. Part one, hammer wood into hole if I can, but it's not easy. Stuff, but that's good because that's gonna be quite a lot for me to weld on. You can just get so badly cut doing this, is the thing, it's a bit dodgy. This is razor sharp. <laughs> ah, right, so I've got that cut now. As you can see there, just release my little uh, clamp set up. So I'm going to have to use my big old welding gauntlets, but this stuff's razor sharp. Really worried about how thin this is. And whether this will actually be able to take the heat of a fire as well. That is got to be two mil. Somehow we've got to get this like, there's a metal rim just around there holding this into this cleat. So. We've got to get that out, get, get that cut through, and then hopefully all that lot will pull out then, and then we'll have our stovepipe out the top. Yes, I'm just not sure whether this is going to be able to take the, the actual amperage that I'm going to be putting in. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'll have to do this with the MIG welder, not the art welder. I think the art welder is going to be too much. It'll just blow holes in it. Sometimes you can lay a bit on with an art welder and actually add, just add metal to it and then have something to go on. But it's not easy. So I've got that. And I've got my door that I'm going to put back on later. I always just have the door swinging off, just like so. So it make, makes it so you've got some sort of control over the draft coming in. So I think height wise, we're going to be looking at it be about this high. And then that'll mean the stove pipe's well above your head. I mean, if that did go, that would be fucking good, but we'll have to see. Right then, so I've cleaned that end there, I've cleaned this end here. And now it's just popping this on here. 
and having a good look at it really, just seeing and it's all about to go wrong. Now would I be better off tacking that from the inside? If I could do that there wouldn't be any risk then of me uh, cocking up these, this bit on there. Hmm. Let me stop this camera and think. I'm actually going to try and do my well down here. That's what I'm going to try and do. I've got a feeling if I do it from here, I'm just going to punch a hole straight through this thin metal here. And we've got a we've got a two and a half mil rod on this, so it needs to be well. This is risky, really. I shouldn't really do it with the art welder; it's too much. But we're going to try it. If not, the MIG welder's over there, ready to roll. Um, I just need to give you a bit of a wash. Right, so let's do it. Time now. Uh, half six or quarter past. Let me just run around the top of this because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, I know what you're going to say here, he's welding in flip-flops. Well guys, I learned to weld in India. No, I'm only joking. I'm just an idiot, basically, and I couldn't be bothered to walk all the way down to the garden. Anyway, let's leave me building that. We'll come back later on in the video so you guys can see how this beast turned out. Now, let's pop to beautiful North Norfolk for a wee bit of golf. So this particular trip was organised by my mate Russ who I play cricket with on occasion. He'd got six of us together to pop up to Sheringham, play a bit of golf and then spend the night in Norwich. Right then, so we've arrived in Sheringham after a two hour drive through <laughs> the back wow. and beyond pretty much, isn't it? Uh, but now we're here and we're just going to go and grab ourselves some breakfast before we go and find the golf course. Oh yeah! When was the last time you came to Sheringham, Don? Probably about four years, four years ago. Oh god, I've not been in here in... Yeah, Donkey's years, like ages and ages. So down by the front, it's just proper. It's not quite as nice as Cromer, but it's but nice. still nice. Yeah, maybe get the drone over all this later on if we can reach from the golf course. Uh, Mark's obviously taking it seriously. He's on the range. Holds to that. I just hope the coffee at the clubhouse is Mark. better than the coffee here. Mark. Huh? Mark who? Oh, what's that? Tall bloke. He's played a little bit of cricket for us for the seconds in the past. Oh, um, real nice guy. Yeah, lovely girlfriend, Brom. I oh, know. Anyway, ignoring the fact that I had noticed Mark's girlfriend in the past, here's my mate Russ, who's the guy who sorted everything out. Um, and you're going to notice as well that alongside the whole of the golf course at Sheringham, there's the old steam railway that goes between Sheringham and Holt. And that's when I thought, wow, I'm going to keep the camera in my golf bag and see if I can get some shots close up of one of the trains going by later on. You're a bit of a mare, aren't you, Nod? How about you, Jules? Say hello to everyone, Jules. Good morning, Jimmy. Good afternoon. <laughs> Well, look at this though, isn't this gorgeous? Oh, you've got some old foxes, Nick. You actually haven't got sports mix. Do you know what I 
Oh, girls, no I'm alright, thanks. So yeah, gorgeous day, and uh, I'm playing probably fifty percent as worse than I played last week. I'm playing a hundred percent worse. Yeah, you and were. I wasn't very good last week. <laughs> but we're going to set up a lovely shot here for us to play some beautiful drives. I now brace myself for all the armchair critics of my awful golf swing. you to hit one properly. He hasn't said fuck it. Golf is one of those games that if you start playing it slightly well, it's got this habit of biting you in the bum because you start getting complacent and thinking you're good. But also, a great thing about it is it's a really nice way for you to socialise with your mates, walk six miles in a zigzag, horrible, through long grass kind of way, uh, and also have a bit of a competitive streak because we were playing against the other team as well. Putting it back. So where, what hole are we on now? Where are we? The ninth, uh, eighth. Feels like sixteenth. Like like Jules is having a bit of a mare behind us. He's uh, he's letting us down because yeah. me and Jim are playing really well. Uh, oh, so we've got a nice, nice little par three here. So you're going to watch us uh, play this par three to the absolute pinnacle. So if we look at it, it's just over there. What was it? How much yardage? Uh, 150 yards. 150 yards. So this is exactly the sort of conversation professional golfers have before they play at home. We've just got to wait for the three special needs people to clear the green. Mate, I, I cannot be putting that on YouTube. This is not 1950. Dif differently abled people. So let's see how this goes. One, let's see. 162. Is that 162. Make a difference? That's, uh, no, that's for me, 162, yeah. that's going to be a, tell you what's going to be a lightly struck fairway wood for me, because I don't hit the ball very hard. My flop shot's working, I'm not too yeah. pissed off with that. Oh, oh yeah, show. that's right on it. Oh, that is right on it. Yeah! I paid the steam engine driver a tenner for this, but he came in just a little bit too late. Worked our way round the course and I got a feeling from the guys up ahead in the front group that they were doing all right. But also I thought, well, I'm near the railway now and there's no train coming by. But after a while I heard the telltale choo 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 and in it came. We lost that day, but I was proud of the boys, one and all. Especially Julian, who was absolutely hanging out of his ass from the night before. Anyway, Russ, thanks ever so much for organising that great day. We had a wicked evening in Norwich. I seem to remember eating a kebab very late at night, at about four in the morning, and also getting denied entry into a strip club. Oh dear. Right, Emily has gone away on holiday. She's gone off to Perpignan for a week with her mum. She couldn't take me anymore she's like i've just had enough i need a week away very much deserved she does loads of work for us on the back end of my website and my youtube channel because i've got another youtube channel you may know um and um yeah it's good for her to get away i think an important aspect talking of relationships is that you do have slightly your own life and don't live in each other's pockets all the time as much as i'm missing her because you know i do love having my bum head around me and big g are getting up to stuff without her here so what i'm going to be doing right while she's away is i want to get the drive sorted out and if I can, I want to get the wall that covers up 
a glass screen. Unfortunately, that didn't happen for reasons you'll find out in this video. I don't know, the drive thing, she's probably gonna know about. All she needs to do is have a look at the Nest camera out the front and she's gonna be able to see that I'm working on it. But it's still gonna be a little bit of a nice surprise for her. Let's have a quick look at what I'm doing anyway, okay, so you guys can get a bit of an idea. So yesterday, I put this like hard standing in, this like ramp, and then pebble dashed it as well. Um, so when I've got the next bit done, which is like hardcoring all of this and then putting shingle on or gravel, it's going to look nice. The other thing I want to do is these beams here, uh, these sleepers, I'm going to put all the way down there and then have loads of plants and that growing in there. I'm going to do the same over here down at this bit. But firstly, what I've got to do today before I do that is get a hard standing in for the bins using my lovely little Diddy mixer. Very nice. So hopefully, if I can get this, I mean, to be honest, I've got a video to make as well this week at my studio. I've kind of taken the week off work, like off the tools to be able to get in here and do this. I gave Emily a lift to the airport yesterday with her mum at about nine o'clock in the morning, got straight back here, got on the digger. So yeah, it was a good day yesterday. So today is going to be getting that hard standing in, getting the sleeper sections in if I can. It's going to be quite difficult. Um, and sort of just carrying on, just pegging on, seeing how far I get. But that really made an impression. I'm a huge fan of podcasts, and the podcast I'm listening to today is called the Belling Cat Podcast. They do in-depth journalistic investigations into things that have happened in the recent past, and this one is about the Dutch flight that was downed in Ukraine, and their search to find out who was responsible. Standing in, guys. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, it's all going really, really well. I'm having much fun snackering. But I do love doing groundwork. I've just got some sort of love for doing it. Eh, yeah, and now the fun bit. Sitting in the digger, scraping off all the old hardcore and putting that to one side to reuse and just getting everything leveled out. This is the point where you work towards the lowest, most worst part of the job, where everything just looks like a bomb site. But it's also the most fun and anyone who's used a mini digger for any amount of time will know, when you go to bed that night, you'll be able to do all the mini digger moves and combinations in your head. It's really, really strange and worries Emily sometimes. Once I'd shifted about the old hardcore and whacker plated that down, the next thing to do was to get the weed matting in. This will help, I mean, you're gonna get weeds anyway, it's part of life, but this will help us getting loads growing up and through. Also at this point, anyone who was walking past my house always wants to chat, always wants to see what you're doing and basically stop you from making any progress. But at the same time, Bum Eds was away and I'd got a whole week all to myself with Big G and really, I was a little bit lonely. Mmm. Right, let's get on with it. About five tons of type one hardcore turned up and I'd already prepared an area for that to go on and that gave me the leeway to get the other areas sorted out, get everything spread out and whack a plate it down, ready for the next day. A quick inspection from Big G who always has to come out and see what's going on when you're doing any work outside and I thought I'd earn myself a quick pint down the pub. We usually do this on a Tuesday night but Emily's away and I've been working on the drive all day like a dog. So I'm gonna go to the pub and have a beer. Yeah. For some reason, I forgot that my GoPro was in my pocket and I left it on. Wow. You really want it to rain all day tomorrow, because it's only got to be a four-day test and you'll be able to go, yeah. What makes you think England gonna still won't have been beaten by Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's pop back later on in this video so you can watch me finish off this glorious job. Four hundred and twenty quid. <laughs> So the evening was the brainchild of my mate Richie, who's a roofer. He loves standing on top of the roof like a cockerel, singing his mouth off and going mental. Uh, but also he's got a lovely voice and loves cracking out a bit of Robbie Williams when he gets a sec. But he had the idea of hiring out the hall, getting loads of the village up there for a good old knees up and a good time. But the main thing was is that we wanted to raise money for one of the local hospices. A difficult environment for filming things that look good and also sound good. So firstly, let's have a big round of applause for Natasha. I 
all the people that were brave enough to get on stage this evening were doing it just so we could raise money for this fantastic charity. So everyone really deserves a round of applause, no matter how good or bad they sound, including me. In a typical kind of English way, everyone sort of sat at the back, but they really did enjoy themselves, contrary to what you're seeing here. Also, we did have other singers as well, yours truly doing Desire by U2. Oh yeah, and before you say anything, this was a Friday night and I'd just come off the golf course. I've always wanted to be an MC, like Skibbity, going along with a bit of Mampy Swift. There we go, Laser Gents, how fantastic was that? That was Jimmy Laser Gents, show your appreciation, please. Who could forget our organiser Richie, blowing his pipes to some Robbie Williams. So impressed, but so alone. Such a saint, but such a fool. Richie was bricking it a bit. I think he'd done some practice in here. He was sounding pretty good and hitting most of the notes as well. Out of men, I'm contemplating, thinking about thinking. It's overrated, just getting up and drinking. Watch me come on. Contrary to how the microphones picked this up, Rich really did sing this really well, but the mic was just distorting because it was really, really loud, and believe me, the next day, my ears were ringing, guys. Anyway, we also had some live music from our mates Robin and Ralph. These two had also provided all the equipment for the evening completely off their own backs, dropping it all off in their own free time, so well done guys. Guys, it was a really, really great night and I really enjoyed it. Robin and Ralph are both really, really talented musicians and they're always turning up doing this sort of event for people just because they love to actually get out there and play. Guys, a lot of you are going to think this looks fairly sort of mundane and not great, but if any of you are in your like mid-30s, a lot of you are going to remember events like this from your childhood. This is just how it was when we were kids, going down the social club to nights like this, discos and just acting around. Collectively, we made hundreds of pounds for the local charity and we're definitely going to be doing this again at Christmas time. Well done, Rich, and everyone who was involved in organising it, and I'll see you for another Squawk at Christmas. Right then, well it's day three of this job. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Mm, beautiful morning as well. So the trusty digger goes back later on today as well. <laughs> I've loved you very much, my darling. But what I'm gonna be doing today is sleepers in down here and down the other side there. Then we're gonna be raking out all this hardcore, getting that nicely flattened down, whackered down. And then maybe this afternoon, late this afternoon, I'll get the gravel here. That's probably gonna to be tomorrow because it's gonna take a lot of whackering. A lot of wacky Eunice, as I call it. Anyways, get on with this. My bro Jordan turned up. Actually, you could hear him talking earlier on when I had my camera in my pocket at the pub the night before. He turned up to see how I was getting on and generally like irritate me and take the mickey out of me. Usual sort of stuff, thanks, Jordan. Also, he looks after Big G when we go away on holiday, going around there scrubbing his little wee tabby belly and also feeding his massive mouth and bitey teeth. <laughs> Right, and so we're getting there. How I've done this, and this is how I did the back garden as well, I've done loads there. Basically lay these in on a like a slurry mix, like a real sort of wet mix of cement, stake them, and then leave them basically. Let them bed in for a few days. Uh, I'm now gonna start over on this side. 
So exactly the same idea all the way along here, really. Then the gravel for the drive itself isn't going to get here till Friday, which is a bit of a bummer. A couple of days later and all the stone and aggregate was due to be delivered. I had some cement left over, so I dusted some powder over my whack down hardcore in prep for when it actually turned up. Right then, so all the stone's turning up, as you can hear. I'm hoping it's the right colour. I've, I've only seen it online, and Emily's away, so if I get this wrong, I'm in deep poo. Gotta film it. All right, oh. back a bit. No, don't worry, that's all right. What, do you want to come no, back a bit more? I'll come back a bit more. I'll, I'll let this off, and then I'll come back to where the stone is. All right. Oh, oh yeah, that looks out. lovely. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Folder. Always watching me, aren't you, George? Getting there, but being watched the whole time. This always happens when I do any work on the house. Big G just sits and watches. He loves work on the house. He loves a bit of manual labour. So to start off with, I got rid of all my cement dust just by dusting that around and hope that would hold together the top surface a bit more. And then spread a thin layer of the decorative stone out and then whackered that down. This was backbreaking work. I had to shovel five tons of this by hand and I had an extra ton and a half to handball about 40 meters away up to the end of the garden because I wanted to put some of this stone around the back there. But as you can see, it was going really, really well. I think it goes really nicely with the sleepers to one side. A few days later I planted some flowers in those beds and it really set it off nicely. Before we finish, let's pop back to the shed and see how that wood burner worked. All we need is a bit of wood, check it out. Built this wood store myself. Got a few bits of kindling. I use my kindling bits here, so I'm gonna have to chop a bit up. I might even treat myself to a beer tonight, even though it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's all still pretty warm, and those bottom welds are pretty crap, but uh, there we go. So then, got it in, it's all ready to go. This bit's a bit of a dodgy bit, because I have to burn all the paint off. I think a few matches in there for good measure. So I'm really, really chuffed with how that's gone today, guys. The reason I've gone out and suddenly done that, because um, I've already got a few other ones that I've made. I've got a massive one that I'm probably gonna get rid of. Um, the reason I've done that is because I've got mates coming around for my birthday uh, later this week, so we can have loads of people over in the barbecue, chilling out, stuff like that. So I thought, why not? Let's build another one of these beasts, get it done. Now I'm just gonna sit down with my book. Emily, Emily is coming out, come on, come on. She's waiting to come out. Uh, Emily's probably going to bring me, I don't know, the remainder of a beer or maybe wine, I don't know. But anyway, I'll see you guys soon. I'm going to sit down and read my book now. Ah! What do you think, Buzz? This is a good one, this is. Thanks for watching today's Times of James video. I know it's been a little while since I last uploaded, but please do hit that subscribe button. It helps YouTube with the drive and passion that's required to make YouTube videos. 
uh, to tell stories and to have you guys along as part of what I'm doing. You know, I don't have to film stuff. It's one of those things, but please do. Please hit the notification bell as well so you get a notification whenever I've uploaded a new video. For you guys who've been long-time subscribers to Times of James, Big G is absolutely fine now. He's got an absolutely lovely, fluffy, puffy little tail and he's loving life. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, which is probably going to be from Portugal, but I don't know. It's going to be very, very soon, all right? But we'll see you then anyway. Love you all.